Good morning, good morning. Okay. Today we're going to continue to work on poses that will expand and open the rib cage so the breath is easier to be received. So whatever you start off sitting on is fine. Right now I'm getting ready for our first pose, which is going to be Supta Virasana and Virasana. So today you will need uh, most of your props. Uh, the folding chair, the two blocks, the two blankets, and if you do have a bolster in your in your prop disposal, you can gather that. So as you get your props, the rest of us, uh, by all means, you can get your your. Uh, I'm just going to use a block today to start to sit upright in Sukhasana or Siddhasana. Now, for those of you that are beginners, Sukhasana is a cross-legged position where the shins are pressing against one another. So you have a sense of the back of the pelvis drawing forward so that you can take your abdomen back and feel a sense of grounding or containment. Your hands rest on the tops of your thighs. So for those of you that do have uh, social media accounts, I've been talking a little bit on those uh, sites that we, in a way, are containers and that this vessel has a sense of uh, containment, right? In yoga, when you first start to yoga, we come here sometimes to think, okay, I want to stretch, I want to open, I want to open, I want to stretch. But some of us actually need to work more on containing areas. All right, so there's always that balance between effort and ease and always a balance between opening and containing. So this action of taking one shin against the other is a good stability factor and grounding the buttock bones down as we lift up through the side ribs creates a sense of balance. So when you have the stabilizing action, it allows us to expand more, All right? Now bring the palms of your hands together so you feel the collarbones moving outwards away from the midline, even though you're pressing the hands together. And as you feel the inner elbows reaching out, maybe you feel your rib cage expanding out as well. All from that action of containing the palms together, you get the expansion, All right? From the shins moving forward, you get the back of the pelvis staying in a position of moving in. So the abdomen draws back and contains so that it moves up and assists in lifting the sternum and lifting the collarbones. Now for a moment, close your eyes, letting your head float over your tailbone and bring your awareness to your breath. See if you can slow it down a little bit. And as you slow it down, observe if it deepens. Can your lungs fill? more evenly, more deeply. And then with your gaze at the floor, slowly open your eyes and looking outwards. And extend your arms all the way up overhead and then reach your arms out and down. Good, now reverse the cross of your legs here taking the shins out once again for that nice pressure and ground the heels of the hands down, reach the inner elbows back and press as much as you can into your thighs without your shoulder blades drawing up towards your ears or any pinching or tightness in the neck or the shoulder blade region. So this will begin to retrain the movement in the shoulder girdle so that you're getting a lift in your chest and a a movement down through the arms. So that when you begin to use the action of pressing into your palms, it doesn't automatically take the shoulder blades towards the ears. Okay. All right, now lean back, extend your legs out one at a time into Dandasana, lining your knees and your toes straight up towards the ceiling. Sometimes that means that your heels won't touch, different than when we stand and then a release out of Dandasana. And now we take Supta Virasana and Virasana 
by initially putting your blanket down so that it is open about the size of half of your mat. And this way, as you bring your knees tight together, you put the block, if you have tighter knees, you want the block turned up a little bit more, but you put the block between your ankles here and gently squeeze the block until your inner edges of your feet point straight back. And then lean forward, take the calves away from the back of the knees and out to the side, reaching your chest out, your hips back as if you were entering into child's pose and then sit down onto the block. Let your hands rest on the tops of your thighs. So if there's any tightness in the knees, if it's gentle, begins to stretch your skin from your shin over the kneecap. If it's really dramatic, you turn your block up. So you can sit with your shoulders directly over your hips. If you feel like you're leaning forward, that's a good indicator you need to take your block up a little higher. Now, the higher the block, the closer it comes towards your knees. So you can be supported here. Cross your forearms. Inhale, raise your elbows up. Now, if anybody's having any difficulty with their positioning, please, by all means, wave or make some sort of indication that you're having some difficulty with this now. So as you reach up and out through the elbows, if you feel pinching on the top of the arm bone, I'm gonna turn so you can see a better distance wise between the, the shoulders. So if I'm reaching too far up, it's going to crash and create no space here, right? So I may want to take my wrists and drop the inner elbows down. So I just let the forearms rest on the inner head, right? So the shoulder blades move away from the ear. But if I'm fine with this, I may be able to sweep the outer arm forward, inner arm back and get a little bit more movement of the forearms back. But again, it's about directing the inner shoulder blade down as the outer shoulder blade comes up. Now exhale, lower the arms down, reverse the orientation of your palms as you sweep the elbows up, outer arms forward, inner arms back, find a nice sense of pressing the buttock bones down and reaching the inner elbow up. So if you feel uneven in the space between the neck and the upper arm bone, you might wanna take your hands a little wider Good. Now, keep the buttock bones grounded down strongly. And as you take your inner elbows back a little bit more, lift the collarbones, lift the sternum. Can you start to feel your shoulder blades drawing into the back body as you lift up through the armpit chest? Exhale, lower the arms down. Good. Now, <clears throat> for intermission, just come forward onto your hands and knees and lengthen the legs out by stretching the heel to the outside of your chair back as you tuck your toes under. Because we are going to sit back down. This is just an intermission so that you have some more pliability in your knee. And then once again, come back down, sitting onto your block. So there's a variety of bodies in class, so we may or may not be leaning back the same amount, right? So I'm going to show my pose and you may find that it works for you in this regard. So if you're not limited by uh, your front thighs, you may be able to find this. Now, uh, I see chairs for most of you, but if there's no, chair if you have like a little table or a, a, some kind of something that you can lean your shoulder blades into that might work whether it's a couch or a chair or something so i want to take my hands oh perfect that'll work fine yes the coffee tables of the world now find themselves with a second function 
<laughs> so I, I lean back. Now, here, I'm taking my front thigh out of the hip socket by grounding the shin bone down. Okay. And I'm leaning back and I, and I bring the chair in to meet my shoulder blade, right? I contain the elbows by squeezing the side of the chair. Now, if you are not necessarily, if you're working with a coffee table, that doesn't necessarily play out too well because you're not going to take your hands as the width of the, the coffee table. But what you may want to do, hold that thought. That kind of works. I'm thinking, uh, Lindsay, what you may want to do is move yourself a little closer to your coffee table and work it like a couch. I'll show you in just a second. It's probably going to be more like this, where you're sitting down. Because what it wants to, what you want to do is take the edge of your shoulder blades into the coffee table, and you want to hook the the hands right here behind your head, elbows forward, and you're going to work it this way. All right, where you cascade up and over, but have your elbows towards the ceiling because you don't want your elbows out to the side like this because that will pinch your shoulder blades. So if you're working with a couch or a non-chair object, that's how you would work it. I'll show you with the chair in a second. So if you have a chair, squeeze the elbows into the side of the chair. Take your sternum towards your chin. Hold the back of your head with one hand until you lengthen up and over and put the block underneath the base of your skull and then take your hands to the top of the back of the chair. And you're going to pull on the back of the chair, taking your elbows towards your knees and it will lengthen your front body towards your chest. Now, if you're working with an object that's wider than a chair, say for instance, the coffee table and you're leaning back with the edge of your shoulder blades into a coffee table. You take both hands to the base of the skull and you lean up and over. And your hands will support you, right? Lengthen the thighs out by grounding the shins into the floor. Lift the sternum and the collarbone as you reach your elbows up and over towards the other side away from your knees. And if you're working with a folding chair or a chair, your head is resting on the block and you're holding the top of the back of the chair, pulling the top of the chair towards your knees. Take three to five breaths here. See if you can allow yourself a sense of opening the front body. And so Danielle, what you wanna do is let the edge of your chair hit your shoulder blades and then lift your hips so that it respects the alignment of your spine and your tailbone draws up into the body. And it will be more intense on your front thighs, but that way you get the stretch of the flesh of the body without yanking at your spine. Is that, is that a little better? You can give me a thumbs up if it's working. Danielle. Yeah, okay, good. All right. So if you feel tapped out, come out of it. Take one more breath, lengthening as much as you can, sternum towards chin, front thighs out and down through the shins. And then to exit, you want to take one hand down to the leg of your chair, <clears throat> right? The other hand to the base of the skull, tuck your chin toward your chest, press your hand into the leg of the chair and come up, pause, hands to the thighs, and then come into table position. Reach your heels out one leg at a time. And then let's clear the mat so that you can take a nice child's pose with your hands on your chair leg. So you're gonna have an elevated child's pose. So here with your hands at the midsection of your chair legs, it's nice because you're 
bottom front ribs can now reach out a little further. And if you have strain in your neck or your shoulders from having your head in line with the arms, you can always bring the block back in to support your forehead. But some of us may get a nice opening in the shoulder by letting the forehead rest on the pool. So either your head is in line with the arms, down on the mat, or supported on a block. Keep reaching out through the arms as you inhale, draw back through the sitting bones and the thighs as you exhale. Now, while you're here, observe the sensations on your back body as you breathe in and out. So it gives you another quality to observe, to inform you about your breath. How often during your day do you actually observe your breath when you're not in class? Maybe after you took a slight jog, doing something out of the ordinary to run, perhaps. Now, take your hands to the floor if you need, push the chair away and take downward facing dog, keeping as much of that opening in your front body as possible. Stretch the index finger, plant the index finger down, thumb down. Take the bottom front ribs up towards the tops of the thighs and press the front of the thigh towards the back of the thigh. Reach the calf down and back through the center of the heel. Take three to five long breaths here. And at some point while in your downward dog, fold your blanket and scoot it off to the side so that you can take an easier walk to Uttanasana. For those of you longer in the hamstring, walk your hands back towards your feet. For those of you shorter hamstring, you're going to walk your feet towards your hands. Everyone takes standing forward bend where your hands are on your shins. Whether your legs are bent or straight is reliant on the length of your hamstring. Everyone bend the legs fully so you rest your front ribs on your thighs. And as you take your chin slightly away from the sternum, notice if it draws the sternum and the collarbones out away from your thighs, from your navel. And then take your fingers to your buttock flesh, draw them down as you inhale and come up. Keep your palms on the back of the pelvis and notice if you can sense your shoulder blades here. Okay. Inner elbows back. Side ribs draw up. And then slide your hands down along the side body for Tadasana. And relax. Good, good. All right. Time for some standing poses. So adjust your camera. I noticed my head was kind of out, out of camera here for a little bit. Sorry about that. We need a belt. Exploring those shoulder blades. They're a wonderful tool for opening the body. So to get a better sense of your shoulder blades, right now, open your belt up so it's not looped. And take your belt 
across the back body. So it's right at the bottom tips of your shoulder blades and have a, a comfortable arm position so that you can, in Tadasana, meaning your feet are parallel, four points of the feet grounded, thighs firm, you can just gently pull forward with your hands so you have some pressure of the belt going into your back body. And then as you breathe in, can you feel your shoulder blades pushing into the belt? All right, so you have a sense of your back body. And then put a little bit more pressure of the hands reaching forward and then breathe into that belt. And then now begin to press into the hands and lift the hands up slightly. As you do so, breathe into the belt and lift your collarbones and your sternum up. So now you might be directing the bottom tips of the shoulder blades up towards the top of the back of the sternum to expand your chest. Good. Now flip the belt over the top of your shoulders so that it hooks right in this upper arm bone here. And now it's, at this point, it's the same side belt, same side upper arm. But what you want to do is crisscross it. All right. And then with your hands very close to your side hips, gently pull down. Lift the collarbones, lift your sternum. Now this generally feels pretty darn good. Ah, but make sure that tailbone goes forward and the navel goes back. Containers, contain your beautiful vessel, right? Because if you pull too hard on the belt, what happens? Watch here. Let's see if I can get my elbow out of the way, all right? This. We don't want this. We want this. Yes, it does take some strength in the front abdomen. Contain it. Now, release your belt. Stand with your belt buckle in your right hand. Extend your right arm out. Bend the elbow, take the belt behind you and now pull down. So it's the right arm is in Gohukasana and the left arm is going to be a functionary assistant in taking the bottom tip of the shoulder blade up towards the top of the back of the sternum. Again, you want to contain the abdomen, no arching in the lumbar region. Weights in the heels, lift the sternum, lift the collarbones, just open that shoulder and then release. Other side, extend your left arm out, bend the elbow, elbow up, pull the belt back behind you, waist height. All right. So if you don't feel as though you can take your hand away from your back body here, you just lower your hand a little bit. And if, you're, if your right hand, left hand does not move away from the back body, that, that's all right. All right, you will, it's just more about a function of feeling the shoulder blade support and expansion of your chest. And yes, it will stretch like crazy, this tricep, that's fine. Just be careful. So Lindsay, you wanna, you wanna begin to start to contain those bottom front ribs in and down so that the tailbone goes slightly forward. That's better, yeah. That's gonna help with the lumbar region, not getting too much sensation in there. Yeah, and you can bend the elbow a little bit more if you want to, Danielle, yeah. Is it, my elbow's pretty bent. It doesn't have to stay open. And then exhale and release. And you can shrug your shoulders, make sure everything's moving pretty well. Now come in to bring your chair back in. And if you don't have a chair, you can sit on the coffee table couch, it works also. And uh, if you are doing a couch coffee table thing, you just sit on the front edge of it and you can work 
in a way where you slide. So you wanna to turn to your right first. Typically it's better for digestion. And, and you're sliding your uh, right forearm behind your back body, because this is helpful for a little bit more articulation of the collarbone out from the midline. And you'll also feel a bit more of this movement of your shoulder blade in a way towards the midline, not to pinch it so much, but to feel how it can go into the body and expand the chest, all right? So that, that's how you'll, you'll work it, Lindsay, because you then can feel that expansion out. So, um, you know what, let me teach it all this variation. We'll do it twice. It's a great way to learn how to do a twist when you're seated in a chair, if you're waiting anywhere and you're just done. You're done waiting and you want something to do. So sit right on the front edge of your chair, feet together, knees together, hands sitting on your front thighs. Now take your right forearm behind your back waist and then take your left hand to your outer right knee. Reach your left elbow forward and then your right elbow back and see if you can reach your right hand all the way around to the top of the left thigh and turn your navel, your ribs, and your gaze to the right. Inhale, lift the collarbones, lift the sternum. Exhale, press your feet, ground your buttock bones and turn. Feel the subtle movements from your breath. Exhale and release. Come back, hands to the top thighs, feet down, body bones down, lift your sternum. So be right on the front edge of your chair. It works much better for the turn and it also gives your hands much more room. Take your left forearm behind your back waist, right hand, left knee, ground the buttock bones, keep your upper left uh, upper right arm coming back in the shoulder socket right shoulder blade coming into the body exhale sweep uh turn to sweep the left arm back as if to reach around and touch the top of that right thigh and turn the navel the ribs the gaze to the left plant your buttock bones exhale lift the sternum the collarbones Side ribs, inhale, exhale, turn, turn, turn. And so just as a reminder, Danielle, you can let your knees turn with you a little bit more to get a bit more of that wiggle room for taking on that twist, right? And that way you can feel a bit more in the abdominal region because Bharadwa Johnson is an open twist so you get more of that fleshy, turn and sensation when you have a limited range of motion in your spine. And then exhale and release. So Lindsay, you're gonna do it exactly the same way or for anybody else who just does not have a chair to work with. Now, for those of us with chairs, turn your chair so that the back of it faces the screen and then the right side of your body is facing the back of the chair, feet together, knees together. Now, when you're working with a chair and you're sitting this way, as opposed to the way prior, you have the buttock bones right in the middle of the chair and your left buttock bone is on the edge of the seat of the chair, right? So this maximizes your turn range. Just go ahead and assume the form of the pose. So here you are. Scrub your hands down, lift up through the side ribs and broaden the collarbones, reach out through your elbows. So you're creating as much space as possible with everything to your advantage. Now ground your feet down. Inhale, lift your collarbones and your sternum, inhale. And start the twist from the reach of your elbows. All right, now the, the right hand is gonna know what to do. It's very easy to keep the arm back in the shoulder socket and the right shoulder blade is doing something here but can you bring your left shoulder blade forward and the upper left arm back as you turn and look over your right shoulder? 
Now, draw your abdomen towards the back body, just like we did in Sukhasana. If you want to enhance that twist more, you take your left hand to your right knee and leverage that twist more. And in fact, I find it more helpful to turn the palm away from your body. And it then begins to train my upper left arm to move back and the shoulder blade into the trunk. And then exhale and release and walk your way around. Assume the pose turning to your left. Scrub the hands down the chair. Feet press down, buttock bones ground down. Inhale, lift up. And then feel that regality by reaching out through the crook of your elbow. Collarbones lift, sternal lift. Exhale, turn, turn, turn. Now, take your right hand to your left knee to continue to deepen that twist if you want to go further into the abdominal region. Create new habits with your right shoulder girdle region by taking the right shoulder blade in, but the upper right arm back. Exhale and Pause for a moment with your hands on your thighs, just to let that spine, wherever it is that's your weaker link, because if you start putting more and more action from the arms and from the legs into a twist, sometimes you'll feel it in that weaker link and then come to stand. Uh, my weaker link has always been my lumbar region. It always moved the most, so that's where I always end up overcooking it. Oh joy. So what we're going to be doing here to create a lot more length in the spine is to move into wide leg forward bend, Parasaritha Padottanasana. So if you have two blocks at the ready, you can take those blocks out in front of the long dimension of your mat. And then bring your palms to the buttock clash. And just like at the beginning of class, we want to use this pressing forward, inner elbow back to give us a, a nice expansive quality about our chest. Lift your toes to ignite a little bit more lift of the arches and the inner knees, inner groins, lifting upwards, and even take a slight back turn. So as I Take the sternum and the collarbones up and reach the elbows back. I can lift up and back slightly here. And then spin the inner groins back, rotate the pubic bone down, buttock bones up, and bring my hands to the block. So I stop where the chest is parallel to the ground. You might ask why. I can keep going. Part of it is so that I can contain this lumbar region, the back of the pelvis. So as I keep the lift of the inner thighs, I can lift my abdomen up and that gives me more opportunity to lengthen out. Spin your arms as if you were still in downward dog. And by firming the triceps into the arms, it assists in taking the side roots out further, collarbones out, sternum out, maybe taking your chin slightly away from your sternum, you'll feel longer and then firm the thighs back as you take the sternum out. Then bend your elbows and come down as far as your hamstrings will allow and take a hold of your shins or your ankles and pull up as you bend out through the elbows. Now, if this is too much, if this is too low, you wanna respect your hamstrings. If this is too low, come back to those blocks. But if you can pull up to leverage length to the spine, do so, and then fill in the space that's remaining between your head and the floor, either with a block or with a blanket. So you have the reach out through the elbows to broaden the chest outwards. 
and you have the pull up on the legs to lengthen the side ribs down. Take five long breaths here. Let your head hang. If you need to bend your knees slightly to get more length to the front body, do that. Give yourself permission to tinker a little bit so that this pose has lightness and ease. The blocks are there to quiet the mind and let the head be a little lighter in its expression. Having your head grounded quiets the mind quicker. And it also when you're truly a, a bit more vertical in this particular posture, it begins to take on the qualities of head balance. When you've completed your fifth breath, take the hands to the blocks and bring your feet either by sidestepping or jumping back to Together and then bring your knees to the floor and either sit on your heels or sit comfortably in a cross-legged position. We're going to move into Parigasana, which is gate pose. So you will need a blanket to cushion your knees here. Gate pose is a wonderful stretch that we don't often get in many of the other postures we do. Uh, one, of, one of the things to keep in mind is that you want to make sure that your knee that you still are on is lining up with the respective hip and that this heel of the extended leg whether you're in a warrior two like stance or whether your legs fully extended is in line with the opposite knee. So right now take a bent leg stance and take your back of hand to the sacrum. And you want to descend the back of the pelvis down as you lift and open your chest. All right, so the shoulders are square. Now, if you feel any kind of lift in the back of this right hip, you want to take your right hand and spin the right thigh to the right. Press down into your right thigh and lengthen up through the right ribs. Now, we're taking a little bit of a extended side angle action in this variation. So bring your forearm to your thigh, and as you press down into the right arm, lift up through the right ribs and then sweep your left arm up and over alongside your ear and reach up and out. Turn your abdomen to the left. Sternum and collarbones towards your head. And now can you bring your right shoulder blade into the body as your upper right arm draws back? And then come back up and now Outwardly rotate that right leg again. Keep your shoulders square with the long dimension of your mat and walk your right foot out. And you can either turn your toes up or keep your foot down, whichever is more comfortable for the back of your heel. And now it's more of a triangle pose like action here. So as you outwardly rotate your right leg, extend out over your right leg and you'll start to feel that stretch in your front left thigh. Let your right hand extend out, turn the abdomen, taking your right shoulder blade in, upper right arm back, and then take your left arm up and over. Drop your head towards the floor, towards that right shoulder, and then take the bottom tips of the shoulder blades in towards the top of the stern. 
reach up twice as much as over. Now, sometimes you'll get more of a stretch if you just let your arm drop. Does that inform your pose a little bit more? So you just let the elbow bend and you dangle. I feel it more in my front left hip, and then I'll extend out even more through that left arm. Inhale and come back up. Bring your knees underneath your respective hips. Palms press forward, reach your inner elbows back, bottom tips of the shoulder blades in and up. So see if you can do a bit of an arc in the upper spine from the navel up without disturbing the Tadasana-like action of your lower spine. And then take your left leg out into a square, heel of the foot in line with the knee, your right knee's underneath your right hip, turn the abdomen away from the bent leg. Now again, there's often a hiking up of that left hip, so turn your left thigh out to the left. Inhale, lift your chest, exhale, extend out over the left leg, forearm to thigh, and turn the abdomen. Reach those left ribs out towards the left armpit, and then sweep your right arm up and lengthen. How far down the right side can you feel the stretch? Keep your left palm facing up. It helps to outwardly rotate that left arm. Collarbone, sternum lifting up, turn the abdomen as you exhale, and then come back up. Lengthen your left leg out, keeping this right hip over the right knee, and turn the top of the left thigh, exhale, take a triangle pose action with your left side. Sternum towards the chin, left shoulder blade in as the upper left arm comes back, and then take your left arm up and over. Stern towards the chin, bottom tips of the shoulder blades in. Drop your head towards the floor and then let your arm bend. You're getting more of a stretch in that top side. So as the sternum extends out, the bottom tips come in. It might feel like a little back bend. Stretch out through the arm even more. And then you can come back. And then cross your forearms, take your arms up overhead, lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. And then exhale, reverse the cross of your arms, inhale, come up. If it's tough on the knees, by all means, come into downward dog right now <laughs> or come into an easy cross and seated position. And then release and then turn sideways on your mat and take an easy downward dog. And then take child's pose. Very good. All right. Hands beneath the shoulders. What we're going to, and sit up. What we're going to do next is Shalanasana and Danyarasana. You can use this blanket that you were that you had for for Danyaras, uh, for Parigasana, for Shalabhasana. It's essentially to support your bottom front ribs and your front hip points. Uh, on a hard surface on the ground. So um, as I lie down, I'm going to position my trunk like so. So the blanket is here. And as I stretch out through the fingertips, right, I want to lengthen the legs, lengthen the arms. All right, so go ahead and situate yourself this way. Now, interlace your fingers behind your back, 
with the elbows bent and just lift your elbows up towards the ceiling. Forehead rests on the floor. We're just doing the chest movement right now, all right? So as you lift the inner elbows up, you can feel the shoulder blades start to move on the back body. Now, lift your head, taking the chin slightly away from the sternum, take your collarbones and your sternum out towards the end of your mat, and lift the elbows, stretch your arms out. So as you do so, the side ribs go towards the head, the collarbones go out, reach to the arms. Now, press all 10 toes into the floor. Lift your inner knees, take your tailbone down, and lift your hands up as you separate them, and lift your legs up off the floor. Exhale, lower down, cross your hands, forehead to hand. Rock your hips gently from side to side. Now we're going to start with the leg part first. So here, take your feet as wide as the mat. If you notice where the feet land, they may or may not be all five toes on the floor. So if you lift your inner knees, do you notice how there's a little bit more weight in the little toe area than the big toe area now? If you take your tailbone down, your navel will draw up and fill in the lumbar, which contains that area, which often gets overworked in any kind of backbend poses. Now stretch your arms fully out and begin to press your palms down and lift your sternum up so you feel you're starting to coil up in the upper chest. Now lift your right leg up and keep your right hip down. Right? A lot of work, right? A lot of work in that hamstring. Exhale, lower the right leg down. Lift the left leg up. You can press into your hands for extra support. You can press into your right foot for that matter for extra lift, but keep the left hip down. Lower that left leg down. Now reach out to the right leg and lift it up. Lower it down. Reach out to the left leg, lift it up and lower it down. Get a lot of space there. Now bring the legs together, interlace the fingers again like before, lift the inner elbows, stretch your arms out, lift out through the sternum, take your gaze up, lift the arms, tailbone down, lift the legs, separate the hands, lift the palms, lift the feet, breathe, exhale slowly lower down, forehead to hand. Now this next one may or may not be available depending on your front thigh. So it's a process. So wherever you feel as though you are gaining benefit, you may want to break this pose in half. Ideally, your feet are hip width apart and you bend the legs and you're holding the outside of your feet. So this may be it because you're Quads are very tight, right? And maybe, maybe that's just not available to you. So if, if that's the case, you may want to just be doing something like this, where you're just holding one leg. This is a Bakasana variation, where you're just stretching one shoulder and one leg at a time, right? And that, that can give you a little bit of peace. But if you're doing the full pose right now, what you wanna do is hold the tops of your feet near the ankle. Draw your upper arms away from the floor. Take the tailbone down, navel up, lengthen your thighs out of the hips as we did before. And with your hands, see if you can lift the shins, reach out to the chest, lift the shoulders. Reach out through the sternum, out through the thighs, and then press into your hands and come up for bow pose, down your ass. Exhale, lower down. Release the legs, cross your hands, forehead to hand.
If that was too intense, then by all means, you can take Locust Pose, Shravabhasana again, or take one more round with me of Dhanurasana. Lengthen the arms out, lengthen the legs out, get as long as you can on your front body. This pose is about the extension first and then the lift and then the compression, the containment. So hold the front ankles once again. Reach your thighs out, tailbone down, navel lift. Reach your sternum out, coil up, inhale, lift the upper arms, lift the shins, lift the upper arms, lift the sternum, lift the shins, lift your feet, and then press into the hands and expand upward. Exhale, release. Cross the hands, forehead to hand. Rock your hips back and forth. If you want a little extra solidarity for those of you with sensitive backs, take the tailbone down and suck that abdomen up. Now come on to your forearms. and bring your elbows right beneath your shoulders. And in fact, maybe you can shimmy your forearms uh, a little, your sideways a little further up and your elbows a little bit underneath you more. Now, so uh, I'm thinking this is a little bit for Lindsay and a little bit for Danielle, all right? Uh, for Lindsay, it's going to fill in your lower back, and for you, Danielle, it's going to take some pressure off of your spine for both, right? So the whole idea is your thighs are going to be pressing down, and you want to draw your abdomen up towards your spine, right? And in a way, it's, it's, it's taking the front body towards the back body and filling in a whole lot. So if it feels better on that lumbar, Lindsay, that's good. If it takes some of the pressure, Danielle, off of the spine, that's great, okay? If for some of you that want to strengthen your abdominal region, that's another thing that it can help with. And then exhale and lower down, straighten all the way out, lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. And then bring your hands beneath your shoulders, take table position. And then position yourself for downward facing dog. Let it be easy. Easy downward dog. Pull the blanket in half towards you. Set it aside for a moment. And then take child's pose. And then bring your hands beneath your shoulders, sit up. And now we're going to close in a supported bridge and with the option of extending the legs out. So if you have two blankets or if you have a bolster, you want to stack your blankets with the crisper edge facing you. And then sit on the more open side of your blanket here. So this is going to continue to expand and open the chest, but not in such a dramatic way. All right. Now, you want to move as far away from this rolled edge of the blanket as possible. And as you begin to lie down, lift the hips so that as you come down, the majority of your pelvis is on the blanket. And as you cascade off, 
the shoulder blades move underneath the sternum towards the chin. Now, Danielle, you're probably going to want to have the blanket start at a point where you feel most supported in a straight line from uh, pelvis to uh, to neck. You know, so you might want to have. You got it. Okay. So the blanket for the rest of us is hitting us at the bottom tips of the shoulder blades so we still cascade and open the chest like shalamasana and here we have a straight line to support a tadasana like position for our chest here right so this is a supported bridge pose if you will now, if you want to go further into Dvipada Viparita Dandasana, you cross your forearms and take your elbows overhead and then slide the heels out with straight legs. So it stretches your psoas in this regard. If for any reason you feel any pinching in your lower back, you can try first to firm the thighs and take your bottom front ribs into the body as you take your tailbone up. Now, if it's just not working, is that okay, Lindsay? Or is it a little too edgy? Okay. Um, yeah, that's that's going to be tricky because I know sometimes even in shavasana you need lift of your heels. So, uh, what I would say today is maybe what you want to do is lift your hips and take the blankets out and do Supta Baddha Konasana, right? That's what I'm thinking may be the, the happy place for you today. What do you think? Okay, good. All right, yeah, uh, my knee isn't all the way down because of the couch, but you would have them both just open like a clamshell. Good, good, okay. And you could try that too, Danielle, if you're not happy in the three pot of thing. Yeah, you could do if if the blankets are out and your feet are up on the blanket, <clears throat> like so. So feet on blanket and elevated, back flat on the ground. Or you can do the three pot of with your blankets under your pelvis. Because many of us are um, caught in an arch of our lower back because of a tight psoas. And this is a great way to expand the front body. And so many times we are left with forward, downward tasks at a desk, at a computer, at a phone. Um, and so much of the time, we never enroll the muscles of the back body to do back bends. And a lot of times it's in part harder to do that because we don't stretch the muscles of the front body in this way. So continue to create space in the body by letting gravity drop the bones, then the muscles release and fall down. And now slowly, slowly begin to bend your knees. If the blankets are beneath your hips, lift your hips and slide the blankets out of the way so that you can roll to your side. Use your arms to sit up, ideally on uh, support of one or two blankets. We're going to briefly 
take three rounds of alternate nostril Nadi Sodna. So the work this month is about visiting the three patterns of pranayama, becoming more familiar with pranayama as a concept and slight experiential tastes of it. So with the alternate nostril breath, it's a very gentle touch to the side of the nose. And you are going to find that the hand position is with the three middle fingers down. Little finger to thumb, very gentle. You start at the bridge of the nose. And you don't really go very far into this closing off of your bulbous part. It's just about traveling down till you feel a change of sinus pressure. So take two or three rounds of just sliding down your nose until you feel the change of pressure. And then open the right side of your nostril and breathe out completely. And then take a breath in through the right side and close off both sides and pause. Open the left side and breathe out. Breathe in through your left side. Close off. Open the right side and breathe out. That's one round. Breathe in through the right side. Close off. Open the left side. Breathe out. Breathe in through the left side. Close off. Breathe out through the right side. That's two rounds. Breathe in through the right side. Close off. Open the left side. Breathe out. Breathe in through the left. Close off. Open the right. Breathe out. And that's three. Close your eyes. Let your hands rest in your lap. Observe. Palms together in front of your heart. Bow your head. Namaste. Namaste.